This is the Eagle's Nest, and I'm your host, Jeff Percaro. And today we have a special guest with us, and it's Tennyson Whiting. And so we would like to introduce Tennyson and ask him a couple questions. Um, and Tennyson, tell us a little bit about what sports you play and what year you are in school. Well, I play tennis um only tennis <laughs> i played basketball and football for a while but i decided to really focus on tennis just because i want to take that to another level after high school um and i'm a senior so I'm supposed to be graduating this may we'll see <laughs> yeah that's that's um part of the tough part and part of why we're doing these series is to try to give uh, some of our seniors a little bit of spotlight um right. in in this tough time so with your tennis, um, tell me a little bit about some of the uh, international tennis tournaments I've heard about you uh, participating in. <laughs> well, it's, it's no big deal. I mean, it's called IPIN, so ITF International Tennis Federation. And you sign up for an IPIN account, and that, uh, that allows you to play in these futures events around the world. And they're super fun. Um, the entry fee is like $40. Um, so, I mean, if you get, you have to win through quality rounds. And then if you win some uh, rounds in the main draw, you get what are called uh, ATP points, Association of Tennis Professionals. Um, and you also get prize money. Wow, so very cool. They're, they're super fun. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So how many of those tournaments have you been involved in? Oof, that's a great question. I'd have to go back and look through. Um, I started a few years ago when I really decided I wanted to play tennis. Um, I played a few in California, and then I've just been playing them um, uh, pretty nonstop in Cancun. So I'd say probably a total of 20, 25. That's awesome. So that so, kind of gives you an opportunity to get out and have some good competition. Uh, great competition, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, it's a lot of fun. That's great. So with the, with the break in uh, suspension of play and all of that, what have you been doing to kind of keep yourself in shape and ready to go? It's tough, man. I mean, I usually I usually eat like a pig <laughs> and just work out all the time, you know. So I've been really watching my diet uh, recently. And um, with tennis, it's a little bit easier because you don't have to have anybody else to practice with you know if you want to just hit against the wall so i've been hitting in our garage for a while just trying to keep my hands soft you know um and they haven't closed any tennis courts down publicly yet i say yet because you know <laughs> it, they might I am, i'm praying they won't but um yeah. i've been going out and playing like with my dad and my brother okay. my brother played d1 so he's, oh very cool. he's still in pretty good shape that's great and now, if I remember right, you sometimes will play double-handed. Tell me a little yeah. bit about that. I, sh I should have brought my racket. Sorry, I would have showed <laughs> no, it's you. All good. But it, it's, uh, here, I'll use it with markers. So you got two handles coming out. Mm -hmm. And for the backhand, it's supposed to just be more stable instead of having like one hand on top of the other. Um, when they first came out with it, they called it the natural because it's okay. supposed to be like... I'm trying to think of a analogy here. It, you have two hands, yeah. So why would you have one handle? You know, it's <laughs> just supposed to be healthier on the wrists as well. Okay. Um, and then on the serve, uh, you hold the front handle, so you get a little mm -hmm. bit better angle on the serve. Like where one handle would be here when you contact your okay. Your two handle racket would be here, and you get a little bit more pop on the serve. So that's great. I like that. Yeah, yeah I, when I was out taking photos, I, I kind of picked up on that, and then I read yeah. a little bit about it. So uh, that, that's yeah. pretty cool because not yeah, a not a lot of people do it's different. that. Different. <laughs> yeah, it's not very popular. I mean, they, there are a few junior players in uh, Las Vegas that are using it right now. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I mean, there's there's one guy in France too that uses it, but that's about it. Nice. So um, when we talk about uh, going out and you're getting ready to um, play, what do you kind of do to get yourself ready and, and calm any of the butterflies or anything else that you've got going on? 
Ah, it's a good one. Butterflies are tough. Um, it's actually funny because I feel like I perform at a higher level when I have those butterflies. You know, it's a little bit of motivation. You know, there's something to there's something to win or there's something to lose. So you feel like you need to play a little bit better. Um, so for me, I think to calm the butterflies is just to realize the hours and the work that I've put in um, and just know that I, I can perform. And uh, um, I also have recently started doing a lot of meditation. Okay. My my other well, my brother that did play D one is now um, a hypnotherapist, a sports mm -hmm. hypnotherapist. So he uh, he teaches me a lot of ways to calm the butterflies and do meditation and self reflection and stuff, and it really helps. So I think that's, that that's the main way. That's pretty cool. I I know that yeah. uh, my both of my sons uh, played D1, uh, did uh, track stuff with throwing, oh, yeah. and they've had to do a lot of that as well. And I know that they've done a lot of the sports psychology and and looking yeah. at uh, how to calm the mind and, and be ready. So yeah. that's pretty cool. That's that's yeah. Great I stuff. mean, for a lot of sports, I know for tennis at least, like the experts, whoever they are, you know, up there at the top, they say. <laughs> Um, they say tennis is like mental and then the rest is physical, you know? Um, so if you're able to calm the mind and really know and have confidence in your game. Talk to me about, you know, a lot of people look up to other sports players and people that are out there in, in whether it's from high school or college or pro, what, who is a sports figure that you look up to or is kind of your sports hero? Um, I was thinking about this not too long ago, actually. And like someone who's really been great at tennis, I feel, I feel like is like, who's a good motivator for me is probably Jorn Borg. Um, he was very calm on the court, very collected, and he just played great tennis a lot. Um, so I think him from like a standpoint of being like a really great tennis player, and then just like an all around uh, great example, I would say is my dad, just because he he also played basketball through high school and tennis. And then he went on to play D1 tennis um, for Utah State. And he's he's just um, taught a lot of life lessons to me through sports. So that, that's great. And those, those are yeah. some great people to look up to. Definitely, especially those that have been there. Yeah for sure. All right. So, you know, tennis being somewhat of an individual sport, I mean, you're out there competing for yourself, but you're part of a team. Yeah. What do you right. do with your teammates to make practice fun? Well, practice for tennis, I've felt like is always the best because you go into the matches and then you're totally isolated, you know, um, you're on the court by yourself. You can't get coaches to come out until, I think you can have them come over in the games on the changeovers, which, uh, anyways, that's just a high school thing, I think. But other than that, you really have to bond through the practices. Um, and to make the practice fun, I think a lot of it is just not so much being a great tennis player as much as just being a great friend and motivating them to work hard in the practice just by, um, giving them that extra motivation by you being nice to them, even, even though they might not have performed well or whatever, you know, I think, I think it's important to have the tennis team be based on friendships. Okay. Otherwise it's, <laughs> it would be pretty no, solitary. No point, you know? Yeah. It would, yeah. It would definitely be pretty solitary. So yeah. that's awesome. Um, what is your favorite memory from playing tennis throughout, uh, whether it's pre-high school or even high school? What would what would be your favorite memory? Um, I played a tournament once in Colorado. Uh, it was an Intermountain, just like a sanctioned junior tournament. And I won it through doubles with a good friend of mine who's out of Las Vegas. And 
we uh, we weren't expected to win at all, you know, just because there were some great competition and it was a big tournament. Um, and I mean, in in the juniors, I didn't ever play much. I mean, my friend uh, that I played with had played a few, and he had a lot of respect behind him. But I was the new guy coming in and everything, and and so that was a lot of fun showing up and just whooping everybody you know <laughs> getting the trophy at the end and then you know at the end everybody's friends and everything yeah but, you know yeah. It's, it was it was fun to gain some respect you know <laughs> definitely and those those are some great times for sure um if if i had to ask you what was your favorite sports themed movie that you've seen and why what would mm. that be man I got a lot. I got to tell you that. I mean, you know, all the boxing ones are great, you know, Rockies and Creeds and everything that they've come out with recently. Um, I really enjoyed watching the Borg versus Smack and Roll one they came out with. I can't remember. Okay. The, I think that's the name of it. Um, but it's a tennis based one. And it just goes through the lives of those two players and how totally different they were. But then they, they ended up being good friends at the end because of tennis. So, very cool. That's definitely not one that anybody else has mentioned to this point. So yeah. good job. <laughs> yeah. So, what time did you start playing tennis in your life? Um, so I grew up with a court in my backyard. My dad, uh, he and my brothers built one. So just like fresh out of the womb, you know, he threw a racket in my hand, and um, <laughs> I was out there. I mean, I actually. Uh, I say this as kind of a joke because it's funny, but like I hated tennis as a kid, you know, all the way up to like 13, 14, you know, when I got onto a team and stuff in like junior high, I was like, wow, this is actually really fun. Mm -hmm. Cause like I had only had experiences like playing with my dad and like when he's like eight or 7 a.m. in the morning on Saturdays, you know, when it's my day <laughs> to sleep in, he's like, all right, let's go. But I mean, that gave me a good uh, solid building block, you know, at a young age. And then Around 15, 16, I, uh, I really decided I wanted to play, so I moved out to Vegas and uh, lived with my coach there. I did online school for a term. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Then I came back, and that was the year I actually won state. Out of all the places that you have gone and competed, what is your favorite venue that you've played in? Oh, man. Um I was just recently in uh, Florida, Delray Beach. They have a 250 event there, so it's like one of the lower ATP events, but it's it's a uh, it's a big deal. And my buddy was actually playing it. I actually wasn't playing the tournament, but I got to go and practice on the courts there with him and with some of my other buddies too. And we had like a group of probably 30. 35 people just sitting on the stands watching us practice <laughs> so that was awesome you know we were like just all and just playing out of our minds and it was it was a lot of fun because you know they all thought we were pros and stuff and I actually signed a few tennis balls too so <laughs> that was cool but That's I mean great. um probably like where I've played the tournament is probably uh -huh. been Can Cancun or something because I mean that's where okay. I won my my points so Nice. And yeah, have you always play played on the hard surface tennis courts or have you done any of the other kind of tennis on grass? I've, I've or played clay? a few. Yeah. Yeah. I've played a few on clay. Okay. Clay is really fun. Um, I've been living in Guatemala actually. Okay. And there they, they only have like clay courts. So, I mean, hmm. I've been just been trying to, it's more of a grind, you know, cause you, the points yeah. are so long and, you really have to work the point. So it teaches you a lot of the strategy too. So um, clay is probably one of my favorites as well. Um, I haven't actually ever played any tournaments on grass, but I have practiced and it's actually, no, I have played a tournament on grass <laughs> in uh, New Jersey. It's, oh man, this is going to bug me. <laughs> Somewhere up there. Up, okay. Up north, out, out okay. east, you know, so. Um, Very cool. but it was on the grass and it was, it was at the international tennis hall of fame. Oh, so wow. that was, that was really cool. Yeah. 
Nice. It's super slippery, super difficult. Big forehand, you're good. Nice. So what are you looking to do after high school this year or a couple of years after? What What's your plan? Well, um, since I recently just won my points uh, in doubles, I, I'm i probably just going to go full time and hit the tour in May. <laughs> well, as soon as they start the tour back up, they actually closed it till like July 15th or something because of coronavirus. So that's unfortunate. But I'll probably just go back and start playing the futures again and hopefully get up to the challenger level. That's the next level of tournaments um, by the end of next year. That's the goal. Okay, and that's awesome. So definitely more tennis in your future for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so being a senior and, and kind of getting to the end of the, the career and we may or may not pick up sports here at the end of this year. What words of wisdom would you give to your teammates that are kind of following behind you? Well, for the seniors, I would just say thanks so much for having such a fantastic three years, you know? I mean, it was, it's a blessing to be able to play and play on a team for practically free, you know, I mean, tennis is an expensive sport. And mm -hmm. when you're in a high school, they provide you with the coaches, they provide you with the transportation, they provide you with mm -hmm. the balls, you know, there's a lot of things that we need to be grateful for. And so I would say, thanks to them, thanks to the coaches. And then for all the juniors, sophomores and freshmen, um, I would just say, keep working hard. Next year's just next year's the year. For sure. I thought this year was it, you know, but <laughs> next year it will be for them at least. That's great. Great advice. So um, with it being uh, the end of the year and we've been told that you're going to be, you know, at least till May 1st before we do any kind of uh, reevaluation of the season. What do you think of having a, you know, shortened tournament or season or that at the end of this year if it was possible yeah no of course i mean i'd love to that would you know i'd i'd be able to play with my teammates again i actually got here so late that um i was planning on just playing the season like the regular season with them so i didn't get to play any of the preseasons. i didn't get to go out and practice with them or anything so that was kind of a bummer so i mean if they do pick up the season the tennis season's easy i mean if you get the coaches all together and you're like, hey, let's play two matches, three matches a week, you can finish the whole season in two or three weeks, you know. Um, and then you can just have your region tournament. And if you don't want to have the season or the region tournament, you can just jump straight into the state. Because, well, I mean, you have to have the region tournament to see who gets to play state. But um, you could do the region tournament and state pretty quick. For tennis at least because i mean you can they hold this the state tournament you have to play two matches a day so i mean if they did that with the region tournament you could you could actually theoretically play the whole season in one week you know so i mean that, that would yeah. be a lot of fun you know it'd be crazy <laughs> it'd be hectic but it'd be worth it i think you know yeah definitely that's great um so i appreciate you taking time and talking to us today of course so, yeah Thanks for thanks you thank you so much for having me. I mean it's fun giving uh, mediocre answers to <laughs> great questions. <laughs> no, no, you've been doing a great job. It's it's um, thanks, Jeff. great great to talk to a lot of the athletes and stuff, and you know kind of get uh, you know to learn more about what you guys are doing after and and be able to kind of share with everyone else. Um, some of the great yeah. athletes we have at Maple Mountain. So this has been the Eagle's Nest, and I have just been visiting with Tennyson Whiting, a uh, Maple Mountain athlete who is a great tennis player. Uh, I want to make sure that you all follow our social media. We have Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube channels all under Maple Mountain Sports. We also have Maple MTN Sports for Twitter. And we'd appreciate if you give us a follow, a like, a subscribe, and you'll be able to see more of these types of uh, presentations as well as uh, when we get back into season, some live streaming and other things. Um, so again, I am your host, Jeff Percaro, 
And this has been The Eagle's Nest.